Okay, so we've got a problem here that tells us that the diameter of Jupiter is 142,984 kilometers and the diameter of the Sun is 1,391,000 kilometers. And they ask in part A um, for us to write these numbers in scientific notation and calculate how many times larger the diameter of the Sun is compared to Jupiter. So how might we do this? Well, f the first thing I want to do is convert to scientific notation. So for Jupiter, what do we have? Well, for Jupiter, we have 142,984 kilometers. And we want to write this in scientific notation. So we want to write this so that it's some number, some factor, sometimes called a coefficient, that's between 1 and 10. And it can equal 1, but not 10. A short way of writing that is to use our bracket notation. We could say that the first number is between 1 and 10, fix that bracket, and write it just like this. Putting a square bracket at 1 tells us that we can let that first factor equal 1, and putting this curved bracket at 10 says you can pick a number up to 10, but 10 itself can't be picked. What does all this mean? Well, I'm going to take this number and rewrite it as 1 point. 42984. Essentially, I put the decimal between the 1 and the 4 to turn this number into something that fits in this interval, that fits between 1 and 10. Now, I'm not trying to change the number, I'm just trying to rewrite it in scientific notation. So I'd say this number times 10 to what power would get me back to my original? Well, I moved the decimal five places to the left. In other words, I took our original number and I divided it by 10 five times in a row. Divided by 10, divided by 10, right? It's 10 powers, it's five powers of 10 smaller. So to balance it, I would multiply it by five powers of 10, right, to enlarge it. These are now equal. In other words, if you move the decimal five to the left, you need to multiply it by a power of 10, that'll move it five places to the right, and you can tell that here by looking at the exponent. So this is the diameter of Jupiter, right? That's the diameter. For the Sun, we can follow a similar strategy. We have 1,391,000 right, kilometers. And we want to rewrite this so that the first number is between 1 and 10, not equal to 10. And if I put a decimal between the 1 and the 3, I get just that. 1.391, that's a number between 1 and 10, times 10 to what power? Well, to if we move the decimal between the 1 and the 3, that means we've moved it from here over six places to the left. In other words, we divide it essentially by, by a million. So to balance that out, we should multiply this by a million, or 10 to the sixth power. And if you're just counting how far you're moving the decimal, just realize that if you moved it six places to the left, right, you should balance it out by multiplying it by a number, 10 to the sixth, that will move it six places to the, to the right. So now they're asking us how many times larger is this number, than the diameter of the sun, right? than this number, the diameter of Jupiter. So to solve that, we could just divide. So we have 1.391 times 10 to the sixth over 1.42984 times 10 to the fifth. And when you're dealing with problems like this, what's nice is you can really break this apart using the commutative and associative properties and divide the first factors right, to get a new coefficient or first factor, and divide the powers of 10. We'll start with the powers of 10, that's nice and easy. 10 to the 6th divided by 10 to the 5th is just 10 to the 1st. Remember, the laws of exponents tells us if you're dividing two numbers with the same base, in this case 10, you could just subtract the exponents. And we're going to multiply this by, well, let's just break out the calculator for this, right, 1.391 divided by 1.42984. And we get 0.9728361215. So they don't tell us how they want us to round or estimate this problem. Um, but I, I <laughs> should I write this whole number out? Maybe, but I don't really feel like it. So I'm going to round it to 0 0.9728. I'm going to use the 3 as my rounding location. And remember, a number less than 5, or 5 less than 5, tells us to leave the number as it is. Or some people say round down. 
So here we just get 0.9728. Now you could have wrote the whole number down and that wouldn't change much here in the next step. But the next step is to rewrite this in scientific notation. Again, because the first number, this number right here, needs to be between 1 and 10. And we don't have that right now. So what do we do? Well, I'm going to multiply this first number by 10 to make it a number between 1 and 10. I multiply it by 10, my decimal is once to the right, and I get 9.728, which is between 1 and 10. But again, you don't want to change the number. So, so you want to balance it out. If this number became 10 times larger, this number should be 10 times smaller. So there we get 10 to the 0. And if we simplify this or think about it, 10 to the 0 is 1. So this tells us that the sun is about 9.728, almost 10 times larger in diameter than Jupiter. So this image I have here is almost pretty much the scale, right? If you were to draw this out, and here's the diameter of, of Jupiter, it would fit about 10 times into this image. Of course, the image got cut off here, so it's hard to tell just exactly how far it goes, but you can imagine that it would work. Of course, my distance from the sun to Jupiter is nowhere near the scale in this image. Okay, so let's go to part B. We've got part A. Um, part, part B, how many times as large as the sun is Jupiter? This is just almost reversing the, the question. Um, so if, if it was 10 times larger, if the sun was 10 times larger in diameter than Jupiter, you could say that in a different way. I could say then, in that case, that the Jupiter is one-tenth as large as the sun. Um, so here we can say that Jupiter is not just 1 over 10, but 1 over 9.728, right, about times as large as the Sun. So it's just reversing the language, and it's just saying the same thing. It's, it is saying that the Sun is 9.7 times 28 larger than Jupiter, but, right, Jupiter is um, 1 over 9.728 at times as large as the sun. It's just reversing the language. If that's confusing you, try to use a simpler example, like if something is 10 times larger than something else, in this case, the sun's that diameter, then you take the reciprocal, right? One over 10. Um, and, and, and you would say that Jupiter is um, one tenth as large in size and diameter as the sun. And that's all we're doing here is taking the reciprocal, right? 9.728, flip it over. Right, that's really 9.728. You can say it's over 1, it's equivalent. Flip it and you get this number right here, which is the answer. Here they want us in C to convert the diameters to, to, to meters and write these numbers uh, in scientific notation. And they are asking us, would this conversion change your answers in parts A and B? Explain. Okay, so let me just clear this off and we'll look at that. Um, so clear this off, sorry. All right, so what do we have so far? We have Jupiter's diameter. We have the sun's diameter in kilometers. All right, J for Jupiter. Again, that was just 1.42984, all right, times 10 to the fifth. And that's in kilometers. So, and we also have the sun, sorry, the sun's diameter. And that was 1.391 times 10 to the sixth kilometers. And what do we know? We know that um, every kilometer you have, every one kilometer, is the same as 1,000 meters. So if we have two kilometers, we have 2,000 meters. If we have three kilometers, we have 3,000 meters, and so forth. So if I just take some number of kilometers and multiply it by 1,000, that tells me how many meters I have. So this is, so this is how many kilometers I have. So I'm just going to take each of these numbers and multiply them by a thousand. And to do that, right, we can just think of it like this, times 10 to the third, that's a thousand. I'm going to multiply 10 to the third times 10 to the fifth, and I get 1.42984 times 10 to the eighth. Using that law of exponents there, this is in meters, right, add the exponents when multiplying two numbers at the same base. Here, same idea. The sun, right, multiply by a thousand, and that would give me 1.391 times 10 to the ninth. So, and that's in meters as well. And in here they're asking, would this process change any of the relationships here? Uh, the answer, of course, is no, absolutely not. Um, we're just changing the unit of measurement. We're not changing the size of either planet 
right? The unit of measuring is just changing. If you look at the height of something in inches or feet, it's still the same structure, whether it's height in feet, all right, height in meters and in inches and in kilometers, it doesn't matter. Um, it should still be the same object. So all of your calculations will stay the same, and you can do that. If you divide these two, you get the exact same ratios and answers uh, in part A and B. All right, thanks a lot.